Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show, where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. Today, I want to share with you about a new role in the C-suite of many companies, the Chief Health Officer, CHO. Say hello to the CHO. The pandemic showed the C-suite, the top leadership of companies, the real need for someone to focus on health. Employee health has been really underemphasized before the pandemic. It has not had someone at the top who has been really focused specifically on health-related issues. But really, if you think about it, even before the pandemic, employee health, mental and physical health, was crucial for engagement, productivity. We also want to control healthcare costs. That's really important. And there are a number of health and mental health challenges, physical health and mental health challenges, that were already increasing before the pandemic, whether things like obesity or, of course, things like anxiety and depression. And with the pandemic, that made things much, much worse. So organizations, even before the pandemic, started identifying shortcomings in healthcare initiatives. They realized that simply EAP programs, employee wellness programs, those sort of wellness programs, yoga and so on, meditation, they're important, but they just won't cut it. You should really have that one type of executive who is going to be focusing on physical and mental health and keeping employees safe. That's even before the pandemic, but especially in the context of the pandemic and with other problems going forward. And at the same time, focusing on maintaining productivity and morale from a health perspective. That is the chief health officer, the designated lead leader for making sure that health priorities for the organization go forward effectively and are truly represented at the top level of the C-suite. So they're in charge of overseeing physical and mental health and addressing various pandemic-related challenges. And again, there were some of these before the pandemic already. So for example, the University of Michigan hired the chief health officer in 2017 for employee health. Google had one in 2019, so before the pandemic. And of course, most companies really caught on to this trend during the pandemic, Delta Airlines, Goodyear, and many others. Executive firms noticed this new surge pattern, and tech and finance firms are especially prevalent in serving, searching for chief health officers, so manufacturing firms. And you see communities of health officers being established at various venues, including top levels like the World Economic Forum. Now, what does the CHO do? They focus on health. They're also called the chief medical officer. You might have heard of them being referred to this way, chief medical officer, chief health officer. They focus on health. So both focus on health as ensuring and providing the basis for productivity, employee engagement, employee retention, recruitment, of course, and managing risks relating to physical and mental health. And of course, with the pandemic, and thinking about what's going on in the post-pandemic recovery, what is a safe return to the office like and the future of hybrid work, remote work, and so on. Now, the CHO is someone who reports to the CEO, just like other members of the C-suite, and works with other senior executives with their domains to make sure that in their domains, health is managed well. So they develop and implement priorities for overall health, remote in-office work guidelines, both of those, hybrid work, and mental well-being, making sure to avoid burnout, which has been a serious issue during the pandemic, of course. Now, what's going on with the CHO? How will the CHO's role evolve as we go forward into the post-pandemic recovery? Well, continue to shift. They need to have a more encompassing position one that focuses not simply on basic health policies, but really supporting employee retention and engagement and productivity more than they have been before. So it started off more with health, but you really want to focus more on retention, productivity, engagement, and of course, paying for costs, healthcare costs. So what are they going to be doing? They're going to be focusing on building increasingly a resilient workforce. So various pain points, targeting them, stress, work-life imbalances, mental well-being, physical well-being, all of these sorts of things. I mean, how much, how many 
billions of dollars that company is losing because of unnecessary employees sick days where employees are getting physically sick and mentally sick because they're not sufficiently taking the steps to take care of themselves because they don't know how or they're not supported by their doctors, their insurance plans, and so on. So that's what the CHOs are doing. And especially importantly, I think I want to highlight the attention that CHOs are paying to mental health. And this is, of course, in collaboration with HR. So this, the CHO is a role that collaborates a lot with HR naturally. And these mental health problems are related to issues of diversity, such as racism, such as gender discrimination, which are really harmful and really lead to competitive advantage being lost in retention, recruitment, morale, productivity for business. So that is what the CHO is doing. And that is the new role that I wanted to make sure that you're aware of as we go through the post pandemic recovery. All right, everyone. I hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this episode of the Wise Decision Maker Show. Please click subscribe and make sure to follow us on your favorite venues, whether it's Apple, iTunes, whether it's Amazon Podcasts, or anywhere else. We also have a video cast, so if you're checking this out on YouTube, make sure to follow us there. Please share your thoughts with me by emailing me at Glenn at disasteravoidanceexpert.com. I'm Glenn Sipulski, the head of Disaster Avoidance Experts. My name is Glenn at email is Glenn at disasteravoidanceexperts.com. All right, everyone. I hope you share this episode with your friends if you liked it. And in the meantime, until the next time, we see each other the wisest and most profitable decisions.